Well, hello there. I always look forward to getting to go to church with my friends. Today, we get to go to church with our family. How cool is that? Okay, friends, let's start by getting ready to praise Jesus with our everyday song. First, let's stretch up as high as we can. Are you doing it? Now, let's get our mouth warmed up for singing really loud. La, 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 la. Did you do it? Okay, now shake it out. Ready? Let's hit it. us today. Leading up to Easter, we're talking about a few stories that happened the week that Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. Today we're talking about what the whole Bible has been leading up to, Jesus on the cross. Jesus took the sins of the whole world on himself to make a way for us to follow him. And this is the story of good news. It's good news because it was on that cross that Jesus made a trade with us that would change everything. And now we can be a part of God's family, no matter what we've done or where we come from. And that's why today we're saying, every day I am who Jesus says I am. We're gonna start things off together by singing a song. So go ahead and stand up and sing this out with us as loud as you can.
got a brand new sound So get everybody talking, yeah Couldn't beat him, nothing could hold him down I've got conquered the grave So come on now, make it loud Everybody shout it out Jesus is alive, right now Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out Jesus is alive right now Whoa. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out Jesus is alive right now
You guys sounded so great. Thank you for singing along with us. And now we're going to take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like I said earlier, today's story is about the day that Jesus went to the cross. So let's check it out. The soldiers took Jesus to the leaders of the city and they put him on trial. They tried to find something, anything he had done wrong, but they could find nothing. So they turned to the crowd of people and asked, What do you want us to do with this man, Jesus? And the people, filled with hate in their hearts, shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! The Roman soldiers then took Jesus and did the most awful things to him. They punched him over and over with their fists. They spat on him and even pulled out some of his beard. Then they found the biggest thorns they could find, weaved them into a circle, and shoved this crown of thorns onto Jesus' head, and the thorns dug deep into his skin. Then they tied his hands around a wooden post in the middle of the courtyard. As everyone watched, they took turns beating Jesus mercilessly with nasty whips, whips that dug deep into his back and with every lash ripped the flesh off his body. They beat him like this over and over and over again. After this, the soldiers gave Jesus a big wooden cross and made him carry it to the top of a hill overlooking the city. Once there, they forced him to lay down on top of this cross. They grabbed the biggest nails they could find, stretched out Jesus' arms and legs on the cross, and drove the nails through his hands and feet. Then they lifted up this cross and placed it in a hole in the ground. And there Jesus hung for everyone to see. This was the most painful way to die that anyone could ever imagine. Jesus suffered more than any man has ever suffered. But on that cross, Jesus also experienced a different kind of pain. Because he took the sin of the whole world on himself, he had to be separated from his Father. God had to turn his back on his only Son. Jesus cried out, Father, don't leave me! But God did not respond. For the first time in his life, Jesus was separated from his Father in heaven, and it was the saddest, loneliest, most painful feeling of all. Suddenly, clouds began to roll in and a great darkness covered the sky. Even though it was the middle of the day, the sun could not shine. It was like the whole world was both mad and sad all at the same time. All of God's anger towards sin had to be directed at Jesus. This was the only way that sin could be beaten and his children could be saved. It is finished, Jesus shouted. Father, I give you my life. And when he had said this, he died. For the moment, it looked like it was all over. It looked like death had won. But that's not the end of the story. God's perfect plan was still in motion, and he had one more giant move to make that would change everything. In our story today, Jesus made a pretty amazing trade. Not really amazing for him, but amazing for us. And actually, it was kind of the most unfair but greatest trade of all time. Our friend Pastor Andrew is going to be talking to us a little bit more about that trade right now. So let's take a look. So I've got a couple of my friends with me today. This is Rex and Brody. What's up, everybody? Hello there. And they're looking to make some trades with each other. They brought a couple items, so we're going to see if these are good trades or not. So, Rex, what did you bring for us first? Well, I got this package of Skittles here. Yeah, okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about your Skittles. Well, they're colorful, they're fruity, they're delicious, and they stain your hands if you hold them for too long. That is true. Okay, uh, Brody, what did you bring? Well, I have a bottle of orange soda, Andrew. Yeah, okay. Uh, tell me about this. Well, it's cold, it's tasty, it's orangey, and it makes you burp if you drink it too fast. <clears throat> oh, gross. Okay, Sorry. yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at these two side by side. So you've got some tasty Skittles and you've got a nice soda. What do you guys think? Is this a fair trade? Yeah, I think so. Go for it, guys. Make the trade. Give me those Skittles. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's do this next trade. Rex, what do you have next? Well, this time I got a Nerf gun. Yeah. It's a gently used rival Artemis 17 3000. It holds 30 rounds wow. and is great for shooting penguins. Watch this, guys. Oh, uh, Andrew, no, shoot that go. penguin please right go. there. No, no, There's no, one no, right no, there no, in front no, of you. Shoot him. No, 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 no. I'm not, not going to shoot you. We, you sure? We're just, yeah, we're just here to make the trade. But, oh, all goodness. right. Yeah, but Birdie, I'm a little concerned. What is this that you brought? Um, well, I did have a bag of Doritos. Yeah. But I got a little hungry on the way over, so. So you. you math, yeah. So you ate some of these. No, no, Andrew, give me some credit here. I ate all of them, the whole bag. Yeah, okay, I see that. So you're wanting to trade an empty bag of chips? Well, it's not exactly empty, Andrew. I also spit my gum in there. Oh. I had to freshen the breath after eating yeah. all those chips. Yeah, that's that's pretty disgusting, man. Nasty. Okay, so, so let's take a look at these two side by side then. Rex, you brought this really sweet Nerf gun to trade. Yep. And uh, Brody, you brought a empty bag of chips with gum that you spit out of your beak. Ew, oh, that sounds awesome, yeah. So what do you guys think? Is this a good trade? No, not at all. No, man. Uh, hey, you trying to pull a fast one on me? No, no, get no, Andrew, shoot him. No, no, shoot him. No, no, no. Take no, the no, shot, no, Andrew. Out of here. No, oh, take the shot. Shoot him. Man, you could have taken the shot. I know. Okay, thanks, Rex. Sorry. Okay, so you get what a trade looks like. Some trades are good deals, and others, not so much. But in the story of the cross, we see a trade happening between us and Jesus. On one side, you have us who are sinful. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is when we go our own way instead of God's way. It's when we hurt each other. It's when we cut each other down with our words. It's lying to try to protect ourselves, but still, sin is deeper. It's being fine when somebody else is hurting, so long as it helps us. It's knowing what God says, but choosing to do what we want anyway. It's putting ourselves in charge instead of God, and we're all sinful. So let's do this. Let's take a look at us and Jesus side by side. You have us who are sinful. We went our own way. We're headed towards death and separated from God. And then you have Jesus who is righteous. He is without sin, perfect before God and together with God. And Jesus' mission the whole time was to make a trade with us, our sinfulness for his righteousness. It's like the most unfair and amazing trade of all time. And this is why the cross is so important to us, because on his cross, Jesus made that trade with all of us. On his cross, Jesus laid aside his righteousness. He took on all of our sinfulness. Everything we've ever done wrong, Jesus made it his own to the point that Jesus died with our sin. He died in our place. And what did he trade with us? He gave us a way to receive his righteousness. Where he was perfect in God's sight and could be with God, now Jesus makes a way for us to have that same righteousness. So that when God sees us, he no longer sees a sinful us, but he sees the perfect life and righteousness of Jesus. This is what 1 Corinthians 5.21 is saying. God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up. You're telling me because of Jesus, we get to be righteous? That's righteous! <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. That's why this is such good news to all of us. We couldn't live that perfect life, and we don't have to, because Jesus did. All we have to do is receive this trade, to acknowledge that Jesus took our sin and our death so that we could have his righteousness. Pastor Andrew talked about how Jesus traded our sinfulness for his righteousness when he went to the cross. And it was and is the most unfair but amazing trade of all time. And because of what Jesus did, we can now be a part of God's family forever. And that's such good news. It's the best news. And all we have to do is receive this trait. Acknowledge that Jesus took our sin and our death so that we could have His righteousness. 
Isn't Jesus so cool? Well, that's it for this week. And remember, every day we are who Jesus says we are. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Before we go, we've got a Bible verse for you. It's good to learn and remember Bible verses so we can take God's Word with us wherever we go. So let's stick it in our heads and hide it in our hearts. This week's verse is from the book of Romans. Romans 10, 9. Believe in your heart, ba-bump, ba-bump, that God raised him from the dead. Woohoo! Now, say it after me. Ready? Romans 10, 9. Believe in your heart, ba-bump, ba-bump, that God raised him from the dead. Woohoo! That's such a good verse. Jesus is alive. That's a great thing to talk about right now with your family. Bye, friends.